Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to this webinar on the topic accurate and repeatable color analysis instrumentation and technique. My name is Jean Therium and uh, I am your host for today's lecture. Uh, during this session, you will receive valuable information about the subject matter from two experts in the field of liquid color analysis. They bring their knowledge and expertise to a discussion of the development of this method methodology and how it can be implemented in your laboratory. Our first speaker for today's lecture is Jürgen Murakemsa, who has over 30 years of experience working with liquid color measurement systems at the company Hach. He will provide you with some valuable insights on color measurements. Our second speaker, Ralf König, who has also 30 years of experience at Hach, will demonstrate versatility of the instrumentation in meeting various international standards for liquid color measurement. Luke Johnson will be moderating this webinar and he will handle any questions and polls. But before we begin, I would like to inform you that this session will be recorded. It will be sent to you after the webinar. You can also find all of our past and upcoming webinars on our website under the events section. We will be answering questions at the end of the session uh, and if possible also in between. So please submit your questions at any time using the question function. We would also appreciate your feedback on this webinar. So please at the end uh, fill in our survey at the end of the session. So. I don't want to spend too much time on the introduction, so let's begin the training. Dear speakers, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for this kind introduction. Also from our side, welcome to this webinar. With the next, I'm Ralf König, not Jürgen Müller-Kenzer, so we changed it shortly, so sorry for this. It's a number of uh, presenters. So this is um, the focus we are going to do to talk and to demonstrate about. So that means uh, a little bit as an intro history of color measurements. And then of course, we're coming directly to the main subject of the seminar, the LICO instrument, uh, instrument to measure colors and uh, intensities of, uh, of uh, colored liquid, liquid uh, applications. So, and we also will talk about accessories and applications. And after my um, my first intro, we will switch directly to the subject, of course, of this webinar, the LICO instrument itself. So then we will continue our webinar with some very important background information to understand much better how the LICO is working and what the background of color measurement is in the theory. Uh, color scales and color numbers. This will be held by my colleague Jürgen müller kemsa And then at the end of our webinar, we will also have a few look on the interface, software features, etc. And uh, there's also time for some FAQs at the end. Okay, let's start with the history of color. So the first colorimetric systems and the topic in general is um, a little bit older, a little bit little bit older than expected at the beginning. So it goes back to the 18th century uh, based on a well-known British uh, scientific person, Isaac Newton. He developed very at the beginning um, of this uh, uh, 18th century um, to, to start some investigations regarding um, the uh, the colorness uh, and and other things so and uh, he found out that color is in principle not a property of physical world but more a sensation so and based also on some investigations he did regarding the solar spectrum um, uh, isaac newton developed also the first uh, um, circular color order or wheel the newton color wheel which is which is visible here on on the screen um, at the center of this visualization, it's not directly visible here, but uh, in the addition, um, the color white will occur uh, following his, uh, his theory at the, at the beginning. So 
Um, and we already can see here on this color wheel the different uh, colors that are, have been known also from the from the um, spectra and, and the, the investigations he did in this field. Um, and that was, uh, as I mentioned before, the, the beginning of this, um, of this development of the theory. Then another scientific person, more known as a poet, Wolfgang, Amadeus, uh, Wolfgang von Goethe, um, was also focused on, on color and color measurements. But he had a different approach to, uh, to Newton because uh, he was more orientated on, uh, on the phenomena of the different uh, colors and he developed more the difference uh, of uh, light and dark, light and, and darkness. And therefore also his color wheel um, was a reflection of the existing colors, but uh, nevertheless here the center is white, but his theory was based on that, that um, the um, additional or that uh, the, addition of all the different colors is not white in contrast to to newton okay but then we are approaching a little bit more um, right now also in the history um, more a mathematic based um, approach to to measure color and, and also intensity of the colors and that is also based on a uh, german mathematician um, helmholtz hermann von helmholtz um, started with this to to develop also a theory about this whole topic together and based on a little bit older theory of Thomas Young. It's the young Helmholtz theory, really to have a basis to calculate and we will see much more information about this later on in the theoretical part, really to calculate um, the intensities and also to combine and to compare the different uh, intensities based on the LICO measurement system. So another little few back on uh, what happened in the past and what, um, what uh, color uh, measurements exist that time is uh, visible here on the left side, the well-known color wheel of, uh, of defined standardized color. If you would like to paint your wall, then of course you have to look for this color wheel to find the right uh, uh, color. Um, formulation on this card and then it's possible to mix the color in the way you are looking for. Here on the right side, the next slides are going always in the same direction. We see simple measurement systems, machines that are based on a comparison of uh, a color wheel, a defined color here visible, and uh, the color of the liquid, which is subject of a, of a check to get information about the intensity and in principle also the color of, uh, of the measurement. So we see much more of this equipment here on the right side. We have, will also hear more about these different uh, color scales. Some are based on dilution factors, giving a different um, color intensity. All these um, will be subject later on. So all of these different uh, color measurement uh, systems, ways, uh, to measure the intensity is uh, based a little bit on a little disadvantage based of uh, that all these comparison between the color wheel and the real liquid in the sample is depending on probably also the human eye and therefore also a different human operator and therefore also the measurement results could be different is it more yellow is it less yellow is it a little bit more green this is always in the subject of the human operator and another disadvantage is, is, of course, that the results have not been documentable via a printer or memory stick or a, a LRN LAN connection. Um, this is all has to be noticed in a, in a book or a book of paper. Good. What else do we have? Here we see the, the real impressive amount of different regulations could be based on standardization formats like ISO or ASTM. We know a lot of uh, very defined um, standards uh, in the world that are probably more focused on different applications, like in the pharma, uh, pharma copia or are given with the US pharmacopoeia. If we are focusing more on the pharmaceutical industry, uh, we will hear much more about these also from my colleague Jürgen Müller-Kemser later on. That's the reason why I'm going to skip it 
right now, but it's, from my perspective, real impressive. Um, I will finish my first introduction of the whole subject, uh, also with a very quick view on the different uh, well-known color scales, which are listed here on the right side. So the most common ones are Hazen color scale, Hafer color scale, or platinum cobalt-based color scale. Um, then we know also the Gardner color scale. These are all um, um, possible to measure and compare also results with the, with the Liquid instrument. Mineral oil is also listed here. Then we know also from um, the former times also the lava lobby bond uh, color systems used mainly to measure fats and, and oils. Then, very important, also playing a big role in our presentation today, in our webinar, uh, the CI lab color measurements, uh, which have a mathematical background. We will hear as well later on much more, or probably also the typical color of, uh, of beer or other drinks must always be the same intensity, and therefore also the scale is very important to check the final product. So now we are approaching a little bit more the live stream and uh, what we're going to, to show and demonstrate uh, with the instrument itself, the Liquid 690. Here we see it on the, on the left side. It's a spectral photometer which has been specially designed to evaluate. And this is very important, all color numbers uh, with only one single, single um, sample measurement. That means we are doing one measurement and all color sales are available and already calculated by the instrument. So and that's the reason why this instrument is uh, very often used um, in different applications. Uh, nevertheless, we're talking about quality control or production control, almost all areas in the chemical, pharmaceutical, or also the cosmetic industry. The features of the 690 in short is uh, also, of course, that, like I mentioned before, all color numbers are available with only one reading. So it's an open cell compartment. The lid has only be closed if we are going to more sensitive measurements using the right angular cell. Um, then, of course, it's an automatic cuvette detection. It's visible around a compartment for round cuvettes as well as for the rectangular cuvettes, and they are directly detected. It's not necessary to type these in. It's possible to measure cuvettes in the format 10, 11, and 50 um, millimeter path lengths for the light beam, sample volume between two and five. So, backlit graphical color touch display. I will come to this later on. User profiles, it's also possible to protect the, uh, the usage of the LICO with uh, passwords regarding the different levels of the persons who are working with these uh, instruments. It's, of course, a GLP, good laboratory praxis based uh, um, template format of the printouts. This is also available, integrated test media control, and uh, yeah, it's also very easy to exchange the cell compartments uh, and also very important we offer already 15 different uh, languages and also via the um, connections the user interface uh, is also usb connections could be used and the lan um, connection if a network uh, should be connected to the instrument directly good that's so far the um, the presentation so far. I will now come to a more practical part using um, the instrument itself. What we see right now here on the screen is the instrument in, in general, and uh, the instrument itself has different uh, connections, which are also visible here on the, on the screen. Um, and the camera, we have a USB connection really at the, at the front side and uh, also some connections opportunities. I will keep it in that way. Also another USB slot on the back side. Um, 
the option to to connect a printer and also the already mentioned LIN cable. Okay, good. What we see so far here is uh, the opportunity to um, select between different uh, different ways of, of measurements. Um, probably it's a good idea to start directly to demonstrate how easy the usage is to start directly with a with a color measurement. Let's press the color measurement. Then that's also the interesting part that the um, the the liquor is uh, display guided. So I will go a little bit closer to make the display more visible. So here we see clearly the um, recommendation to measure first the cubit with uh, distillated water. And another very important fact is also that um, the light beam of the of the measurement is uh, forwarded through these uh, two different um, compartments roughly in one centimeter size here in, in the cubit. That means this area is very important to be cleaned every time if a cubit um, has to be measured in the system. So following this instruction, please insert a cubit with distillated, with distillated water could of course also be deionated water. Then the, um, the zeroing uh, started and we see also directly that the 11 millimeter round cubit has been detected by the instrument. And then of course the measure uh, button is already activated for the next measurement. Let's go for a more colored cubit. And of course also the wiping, the free cleaning is important when I put in the cubit and the measurement is started directly. And we see on these bars the progress of the measurement and uh, directly we will get a measurement results. So regarding this color value of APA, this is a little bit too high, but it's a, also a good opportunity to demonstrate that on each color scale also the measurement range is visible in this bar. And here for this color, it has been a little bit too concentrated, but we can also use right now the opportunity to switch between the different color scales. Right now we see here alpha and uh, like um, mentioned uh, at the beginning, uh, all other scales are directly measured and could be also displayed in that way. Here we see the color value of Gardner. We see also here on the on the right side, uh, the, the bar of the measurement range that is used here in this way. And uh, we see also the, the result for Gardner. This is uh, 4.8, we will come to this later on. Um, then we see also CLET, color number scales. Um, what else do we have? ASTM color. So there's a little, really a big amount of different color scales that are um, directly displayed, lobby band scale. So um, as it was, so this is a lot of uh, information already available there. You, it's, it's very easy to switch between uh, the different scales. And here on this um, overview of the color scales, we can directly switch also to uh, color scales here really at the end of the long list of uh, available scales or we can sc scroll up to the um, a little bit more of new uh, color scales like the Hunter, Hunter uh, color whales or um, which is also visible here, the CLF values. So we come to this, oh, oh yeah, good on this. Then we see also um, the mathematical based uh, calculation of the different uh, um, CLF scales and we will hear from you later on much more information about uh, how this is um, created and how to interpret also the measurement results. So what else do we have here? The Hunter lab uh, values, we already have seen this. This is also something which is uh, displayed directly here in this way. What else do we have? Um, 
and also very important for users uh, coming from the pharmaceutical industry, um, according Pharma Coupe here, the European one. Uh, we see much more information here on the screen, of course, for the L, A, and B level, Delta E for the um, the three-dimensional uh, measurement and the, the difference of the different color codes. And we see also the highest number is uh, yellow here. It's not a big uh, surprise because it was very uh, intensive yellow, the, the liquid when we start the measurement or the uh, pharmacopoeia color measurement in general. So we see here an automatic uh, evaluation uh, according the pharmacopoe. So, and the instruments, the LICO has uh, seen that uh, the color is very according yellow one. So, here on the next um, level of selection options, we see that we can switch off uh, the auto, auto function, but let's keep the auto function here like uh, already selected. And if we go to graph, then we see the different color or color scales that are already stored in the in the instrument uh, for red, for brown, for yellow, and a little bit mixture color, yellow green, visible here starting on the right side with the lowest concentration. And then we have different concentrations also uh, stored in this instrument and uh, the the measurement that has been done on this way, the result is visible here on this side with a little cross. But I will go to the to the um, to the um, concentration and also the result later on. Then it's <clears throat> also possible to make it a little bit more visible. The result has been yellow one, and we can see that the little cross here on the side is very close to this. Uh, this way. So um, going back um, gives us the opportunity to go directly to yellow and then we can again press on uh, on this uh, measurement uh, result and then we see it's a little bit bigger than yellow yellow one and then if we go to the um, to the um, illumination and then see and um, the, let's go back first here, and also on this uh, pharmacopoeia wheel, then it's also possible if we selected the yellow one to show also the, the graphic. And then we, again, it's only for yellow displayed, and we see the cross up based on the measurement of the, the cubit, this yellow one. Then we know that. Uh, this is a concentration that has been found based on the measurement of the NICO. Good, that's so far to the pharmacopoeia. It's also possible to do measurements according to US pharmacopoeia as well. And the Chinese one is also uh, included. And we see a lot of other opportunities, also in interest of time. We will skip it right now because a lot of opportunities exist to measure with the LICO, the different color scales. So that was, in short, the first section, color measurements. Um, it's also possible to measure color different measurements. So again, uh, a cubit is, um, is requested. Um, the big difference to what we have seen before, a direct uh, color measurement, if we are probably a go one time back, if we go back to um, color different measurements is that I'm going to create my own standard with a with an um, also a round cuvet, for example. So based on my production, I always have to produce the new products according to this intensity of this yellow color. And therefore I'm going to define this color intensity as my standard and all forthcoming new production and my quality control has been according this intensity of this yellowness of this liquid. And this is done with the color difference measurement. And probably I can um, define a new standard and it's requesting me also these measurements to define the standard or to insert um, 
the reference qubit. Let's do it like we test it here. Then uh, the reading is done, and it's always possible to combine or to to um, have a comparison between the intensity that has been the, uh, has been defined as a standard to the measurement of my new product to get a really impressive whether the um, the brightness and the uh, different um, color intensities are um, subject of an, of a good product and uh, whether the um, quality requirements are met or probably not. This is also possible with these color different measurement in general. Good, what else do we have with the LIGO? It's also possible to do classical photometry based uh, measurements uh, on a single wavelength, on multi wavelengths. This is all possible. We get the absorption or are we going to after a zero measurement and a normal reading. It's always possible also to switch between absorption and transmission. It's no problem. Um, what else do we have? We can do a wavelength scan if we have an, a color change to expect in between a measurement range, probably um, temperature related or whatever, or a time related. All these things are possible to define really um, a measurement basis where we could check the product as well to get an impression about uh, the quality of the new product. Okay. Um, really, at the beginning, as the instrument is new, the option instrument setup is used to um, to define very important um, setups of the instrument. For example, it's possible to put in um, a name, a username, uh, according the dimension GLP documentation in this um, in this instrument. It's always key also to have the name of the uh, operator, and uh, this is. Uh, possible to fix the operator here by name. And if this is uh, chosen at the beginning of my measurement, then always I will find the name also with the day, with the day and probably also with a, a little description of the, of the sample. This is done with the sample ID. We also could put in some text regarding, uh, is it an inlet uh, water sample? Is it an a new product, is it an old product, is it a standard, whatever, all these information could be typed in in the section of sample ID. And all this information is then later on also stored in the, um, in the instrument, in the LIGO itself, in the database. So date, time, I think the majority is self explaining. Also security level, it's possible to define different security levels um, for the uh, lab operators, probably for the uh, lab manager or a higher security level. This is always uh, possible regarding security password. Um, the very important thing is don't forget this password that has been uh, used. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's a little bit tricky to really to get access again if the uh, password is not available anymore. Good. That's so far for the instrument setup. System checks, also a very important topic. Um, and then I will also come regarding this live demo to an end. Um, the system check checks are very important to get also order to fulfill probably also requirements um, regarding um, system description and uh, probably also regarding uh, ISO audits done in, in certified labs or probably also in between the pharmaceutical industry or chemical industry. Therefore, this information is always very important and all this um, basic information is uh, visible here on the screen and also stored in the, in the, um, in the LICO um, here regarding instrument version and also the, the software version is uh, displayed here. Instrument update is always done regarding uh, the USB port we have seen on the on the front side. It's very easy to put in the, the USB stick and press on start and we see the update regarding this bar um, visualization with the percentage of pro progress here in this way. 
right now it's nothing in and therefore it's also very important to, to start this, with these ones so, so far. But not a big surprise, no USB memory stick has been connected, therefore of course no update is done. Um, what else do we have? An optical check. This is, from my perspective, a very important tool. Um, we are offering a so-called um, filter system. This is visible, hopefully here. Yeah, it's it's visible on this with uh, four different types of uh, of filters that could be used to check the analyzer regarding stray light regarding photometrical accuracy or the wavelength accuracy. And we, together with this, um, this filter set, we are also offering um, certificates like visible here on the screen. Um, we will see these also later on in the PowerPoint presentation. And um, it's uh, from some of the customers who are using the instrument, these different filters are also used to check the functionality of the of the LICO instrument, um, probably on a daily basis, or on a weekly basis, or on a monthly basis. This is always depending a little bit to the to the um, to the process that has been fixed in, in general. And uh, if we have a look here on this uh, verification kit on this display, we see um, all the relevant data regarding uh, the four different classes of different filters which are displayed here, and we will find them also with the expected result here on our table on this certificate, also with the acceptance of the tolerances. It's not very high, around two or three percent. So therefore, and this is also, of course, um, checked at the end, um, and uh, this should be also a, not a daily, but probably a weekly routine to use these verification check to demonstrate also that the photometer is working in a proper way. Last thing I would like to show right now is also an opportunity we probably know from the usage of QVET test to measure on a photometric basis um, standards to check uh, photometers and the handling in general. So what we offering for the LICO instrument are also an ADISTA set. Yeah, for color measurements, Adista Color is the name. And uh, for the two, also very often use uh, different uh, color scales, the Gardner and also um, the um, Hazen uh, color unit. Uh, we see here in, in the, in the um, package uh, six in some, some six different um, color. Um, color intensities for the different uh, measurement and uh, in these uh, this sheets right now I try to unpack this and the noise on the background we see also on this uh, on this uh, test protocol um, the different uh, color um, units and um, the, the measurement way of how this has to be detected and then also the um, expected uh, concentration is uh, stored in these uh, in these uh, in this uh, storage data and as an example let's uh, go for uh, color hazen um, two the adista solution two we are going to select this and uh, if we do it in the in the right order and if we do it um, in the right uh, way then the instrument is combining the existing concentration of a, of a unit with the um, yeah with the uh, solution that has been used uh, with the instrument, and then of course we have the opportunity really to look for um, the the praxis of these uh, standard measurements. So let's do it here together via the um, normal way of, of this uh, analysis. Um, normally it's possible to start this here via this AQA button on the right side to run this and uh, to get the information whether the, inform um, the instrument is uh, working in the most proper reliable way and uh, to have these measurements. 
Now I'm coming to an end for the presentation. Also, um, the round cuvettes are available, um, 11 millimeter, um, to measure liquids with a higher intensity to get also an overview about uh, what is possible to use different types of cuvettes. These are the rack anywhere cuvettes uh, for different liquids. And of course, also the light beam is um, passed through these cuvettes here in, in these uh, positions, uh, uh, approximately one centimeter high. Therefore, also this part of the cuvette has to be subject of a very intensive cleaning. Good. In the interest of time, I would say this is so far the most important thing um, to have a look on these uh, most important uh, functions of the of the LICO. And uh, now we are going to return to the uh, the um, PowerPoint presentation. So this is what we already have seen. So I would like to, to use uh, the rest of my part here during this WebEx um, conference, um, the webinar, is to have a look on the accessories visible here. So this is the, the starter kit with different uh, um, round cubits and uh, also the rectangular, we call it plastic uh, cubits visible here. What else do we have? These, uh, Test kit, filter test kit, which we have seen in operation uh, on the on the LICO a couple of minutes ago. Then uh, the certified test solution set for a DISTA color for having measurements, uh, testing the functionality and uh, whether also the handling is so far okay. Round curved, 11 millimeter, all disposable. Then we are for the if a higher sensitivity is needed for not fully colored uh, uh, liquids. Then we have also these uh, rectangular cuvettes visible here, glass and also a plastic material disposable, PPMA. Um, here they are also available with a, with a cap, uh, very close, probably could be used also to, to, um, to use uh, standards, uh, color standards uh, on, on own define color standards if they are needed for the color different measurements could be used and this is very practical to have this lid then we have here the cell compartment for the rectangular um, qubit measurements here we see an overview of, uh, of uh, available um, qubits for the different applications so for power lens 10 or 50 millimeter for the very sensitive measurements we have different um, uh, materials, uh, PPMA, more disposable ones for then also for um, glass measurements and measurements in a, in, a, in a matrix that has to be a warmer to avoid uh, really freezing of the liquid. This is uh, also possible, of course, in, in, in glass or these regular glass um, cubits, and the rest could be done in the round cubit, like given here. Good. So for some measurements, and that's the reason why the, um, the the heater is here on the right side visible. We have to measure also, and this is also possible, in a little bit different uh, matrix like uh, paraffin or wax, and therefore it has to be heated to a dedicated temperature, maximum 150 degrees is what we have already seen. Good. This is what we already have seen. A distal color test filter set. So, and uh, with this uh, overview, I will come to an end and to hand it over to my colleague Jürgen. Okay. Thank you, Ralph. It was very interesting what you presented to us. I will then go ahead with the um, basics of the color measurement. So um, give you a little bit in details about how the theory is behind color measurement and how the instrument works internally and how to define a little bit background more about the color spaces itself. Um, 
Okay. Yeah. So what we will start with a definition, what is color? And for sure we will find in the ISO standard a definition, uh, which is the most important standard for color measurement is ISO 11.66.4. There you will find that the color is a sensation of part of the visual field, which is the eye is perceives as having no structure and by which the part can be distinguished alone from another structure less and adjoining regions when viewed with just one motionless eye. So that's a very theoretical definitions about what is color. The ASDM defines a little bit different. ASDM E308 is the most important color standard in the US. And there is really some more detail in that because here you will find um, it's independent from the shape, size, or from the position, and it is not gloss. And yeah, the ASDM talking about the incident light, the spectral reflections, transmissions, radiance, and of course, the spectral response of the observer and the illuminating and viewing geometry. So much more details you will find in an observer. Uh -huh. You see the illumination is important for color measurement and for sure also the viewing, viewing geometry is important. And why? That can you see on the next slide here. You see this blue square showing up here. And if the blue square disappears after some seconds, you can't really remember which type of blue was it. Was it that blue what is now shown on the right side? Or is it different to that? So human eye cannot really store the real color. We need definitely a standard for that, or we need color numbers to identify if the color is identical or not. Or, and that's normally done by a comparator, or if you compare the, your product with a standard, then you put this vice versa. That means close both samples near, and then you can easily see that there is a yeah, visible color difference between the first blue rectangle on the left and the other one on the right side. That's it, how a normal uh, visual comparators works. But the total difference is difficult to describe verbally. Yeah, so that's probably darker. The right side is darker than on the, on the left. The left is brighter or more lightness. But we cannot really say or give numbers for that. And for this, we need to measure that. The measurement system allows them to have a real number for each color. There are some other effects um, disturbing the human color determination. You know, one is here the so-called Betzold effect. You see yellow stripes and blue. And if you watch, watch this picture, then you will definitely see that on the left side, the blue is light, and on the dark side, the blue stripes are darker. But that's only an effect. If we put a square with the same color on top, you see that the color is identical on the left and on the right. It's just a human error. Another thing is uh, color blindness. Yeah? If people have some kind of color blindness, then it's probably not the best to do some color assessments. Therefore, a um, Japanese dentist developed uh, 1917 some um, tables with uh, dots on that to identify red-green errors in the eye or the yellow-blue error of the human eye to 
get uh, yeah to do some tests for color blindness. So as we have seen, the color perception, we definitely doing this with our eyes, and we have seen in the ASTM standard as the human eye is, plays a very important role in this color perception. Therefore, we have a bit deeper look on the human eye. Here you see the human eye with the lens, pupil lens, um, the retina, the blind spot, and the yellow spot. So the picture we is uh, coming from 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 top, yeah, through the lens, and you will see this picture on the rear side on the retina. Let's have a closer look to the retina. There you will find some sensitive cones and rods on that retina. So you see two types, the rods and cones are a bit different in the shape. And you can distinguish the cones in three types of sensitivities as there are, and this was done by Hermann Helmholtz or Thomas Young at that time. They identified that the cones are color sensitive and the rods only sensitive for lightness. And the rods are used during night, so there is no real color visible during night. You see only lightness and darkness with the rods and with higher illuminations, the rods are switched off more or less. There's no contribution of the rods to the visual um, viewing. The human eye only views with the cones and the cones are color sensitive. Like you know from uh, monitor or from beamer, you have these uh, red, green and blue sensitivity yeah, on the monitor mask. You have these relatively sorted in a right way and in a constant number. But the human eye is a bit different from that. In the human eye in the yellow spot, yeah, there's less blue cones sensitivity and in bigger range around these yellow spot, there are also more blue cones. And therefore, there's a definition of two different operator. One is a two degree observer. The two degrees observer observes a coin in maybe in 50 centimeter distance from the human eye, which is then um, only visible on the yellow spot of the human eye. This was defined in 1931. Later on in the 70s, there was a, diff a second definition of a 10 degree standard observer. The 10 degree standard observer observes a sample size of about uh, yeah, a postcard or so. This um, bigger size includes more of the blues sensible cones in the on the retina. This has a small change on the human sensitivity. This is given also on the in the readings. That means if you ever when you do a color measurement, you will either find the standard observer definition of the two degree standard observer or of the 10 degree standard observer. Here, for instance, the Lico screen on top in the header line, you will find the actual setting of the instrument. And here, in this case, is the two degree standard observer used for the calculation of L, A, and B stand values. We can find that also in a spectral graph. So, this is part of the ISO and ASTM standard. These are um, real numbers in these standards given, but here in, in a graph you is, 
can see that more visually. Um, the three types of cones for red, green, and blue, and the difference between two degrees standard observer and 10 degrees standard observer. And as I mentioned, yeah, with the 10 degree standard observer, the, uh, there are more contribution of the bluish cones. So that means the, the sen sensitivity is a bit higher for the 10 degree standard observer than for the two degree standard observer. The values behind these graphs are stored in the instrument and used for each measurement depending on if the two degree or the 10 degree standard observer is selected. And you see here the wavelength range, yeah, the human eye is only sensitive from 380 nanometer to 720 nanometer. Even as the total definition in the ISO and ASTM is bigger, starts very low at 320 or 340 nanometer, goes up to it above 800 nanometer but the most important part is only between 380 and 700 720 nanometer wavelength range that's the definition of the human eye for the color measurement as we have seen in the ASTM standard also the light source is very important yeah? if we view during yeah, candle light, then everything is more or less yellow. Uh, so we have uh, more uh, brighter color than uh, we, we are talking about a neutral light or even daylight. Uh, we can have up to 6,500 Kelvin. It's more a cold a light source. And for each, or well, there are a lot of light sources available in, in real, but for the color measurement itself, there are three most important definitions, which is then the light source A, C, and D65. Light, light source A has this curve, the yellow curve. You see that's uh, like, like a tungsten lamp or a halogen lamp, a relatively yellow colored light source. And was used at the beginning of the color measurement in the 30s last century. The definition of the light source C and D65 was, was done later in the 70s. Um, the difference in the visible range is very small between light source C and D65. Uh, the main difference is below. 380 nanometer because daylight contains much more UV portions of the um, light compared to A or C. But that not that important for us. Most of the liquid color measurement and standards are based on light source C. Also these numbers behind are stored in the instrument and selected depending on what's selected in the option settings of the instrument. So you can change between A, C, and D65 light sources for the calculation. Now coming to the basics of color measurement. So we have now the human eye specified. We do have the uh, light sources specified. And then it comes to the basics, how does the instrument work or how is the theory behind to calculate based on these um, standard observer and light sources then the color values. And for this, yeah, to understand what you know, every color number is related, you will find also C2 degree or D65, 10 degree um, information on the print. And with this, now you know that the two degrees or 10 degrees depends on the observer settings. And the light source is then light source C or D65C is um, 5,600 5, Kelvin. And D65 is daylight. This is probably the, the D is used for daylight and 
65 is for the color temperature of 6,500 Kelvin. And yeah, color measurement is defined as the objective determination of three concrete chromaticity uniquely identifying a sample. That means we need three, yeah, like in a real room, you have three coordinates, length, width, and height. We have also three for the color. The basic definition you will find here, X then stands for X, Y, and Z. And you see here, it looks a little bit difficult, but it's quite easy um, integral. It starts from 380 nanometer to 720 nanometer. That's the wavelength range where we're talking about when we talk about colors. Then you will find the uh, numbers for the illumination. That means light source, A, C, or D65. Then you find the sensitivity of the human eye, with, which is then here defined for red. Reddish is X. Greenish is Y and blue is Z. And then the transmission of the sample, the measured sample, and this and the step right of the instrument. So typically it's 10 nanometer here. So that means the instrument starts with 380 nanometer, multiplies all these factors, and then steps over to the 390 nanometer, and so on and so far. And you and the end you get X, Y, Z. If you draw a graph out of this X, Y, Z, you, you will find that as a three angular graph, which is very difficult to work with. Uh, we are much more comfortable with uh, rectangular graphs and not with triangular graphs. Therefore, this X, Y, Z values are transformed in rectangular systems. You will, but you can also display on the instrument X, Y, and Z. And that's the standard values for water. That means these are not 100, 100, 100 for distilled water. It depends a little bit because X was a little bit smaller than Y and Z is higher than Y. And you will find that also in these nominal values of the, the stimulus numbers. And you see also some more information here. Again, the standard light source and uh, observer, the used pass lengths, 50 millimeter sample cell in this case, date and time, and some other things. So from this X, Y, Z, we transform that in rectangular systems. Yeah, you have seen here this three angular system, X, Y, and Z. The first um, step or the first developed color system was then the color system XYY was developed in the 1933 year, last century, and used for a very, very long time to, um, yeah, to measure colors and to make some um, color graphs. So you couldn't uh, measure the XYZ values and then put that in, into this graphical system. The disadvantage of this one was that the distances between two points in this system was not equal to, uh, or depends on which color was viewed. So it was different in the yellow area than in the blue or in the reddish color. And to um, get a constant color system, so where the distances between colors, uh, visible color distances are more or less the same, there was the development of the CLAP color system. And that was done in 1974. There are also some calculations behind which are stored in the instrument. Yeah. These are not that trivial. So especially for the CLAP system, yeah, there 
difficult calculations are performed with in the instrument. But um, with these LAB system, it's much more clear to how to um, work with color numbers. Yeah, you have L for lightness of the sample. L100 is would be white and L0 is dark, black. A stands for the A axis here. You can see red, plus A is reddish, minus A is greenish. And the B for yellow and blue. You can have a delta, you can have a C for the chroma and H for the U. And you can also define delta values, which, which means uh, if you have a sample and a reference, you will generally have a difference in lightness, a difference in the reddish green axis, and a difference in yellow blue. And with this, you can draw a graph and you can cal calculate the smallest distance between sample and reference, which is then called delta E. And the instrument here, for instance, for the European Pharmacopoeia shows then the sample color L, A, and B, the delta to the reference value, which is in this case here, in this example is a B brownish four, and it shows also the distance of your measured sample to brownish four, which is here then delta E four. 0.4. That means this distance between the sample and the reference is 4.4. This is all done by the instrument itself, and you can simply switch through all the color systems. Also, Hazen Gardner, there are some color calculations behind based on X, Y, and Z. And all further color numbers. All, always counted and calculated from X, Y, Z. How does the instrument internal works? We have here on the optical path of the instrument. So there's a light source, there's an aperture, there's a grating inside, works a little bit like a prisma, but in reflection and this can be moved. And depending on the position of the grating, the portion of the light, or the specific wavelengths is going through the cell compartment, split it a reference beam for referencing the um, lamp, and then the most portion of the beam goes through the cell compartment and is then measured by the detector. And you have seen we have two cell compartments, one for rectangular cells, either 10 millimeter or 50 millimeters and the other one for round wires. So what the instrument is doing, it, it records all the transmission values over the wavelength range from 380 to 720 nanometer in step of 10 nanometer and that calculates the L, A and B or all the, whatever you <laughs> select on the instrument display. That's more or less yeah, the basics of color measurement. So we can now go to the um, some visual color scales. I have a short information about how that works. For instance, the most important one, only the most important one here, we have the Hazen color, yeah, sometimes also called as uh, APHA scale or platinum cobalt scale. It's uh, defined in, in the most important or basic de definitions in ISO 6271. And um, the original definition was a platinum cobalt um, standard, which is shown here. The original standard solution has a color number of 500. And from this standard solution, there were made uh, dilutions in each region up down to step of one. Or sometimes such a comparator was used. There are also some other 
ASTM standards related to that. Uh, just the difference is sometimes in the um, path length of the sample, which is then different to distinguish more light colors or to um, evaluate more st stronger colored samples. And if the sample its color is more color than the Hazen color, the Gardner color should be used. Here you can see some transmission curves of Hazen standards, or the platinum cobalt standard, yeah, at Hazen standard 10, you see these typical platinum cobalt uh, absorption here in this transmission graph. Gardner color scale is very important, or often used globally. Uh, the basic is also the same chloroplatinate solution for the standard one to eight. Here you can see a visual comparator with liquid standards. Yeah, one to eight is also platinum cobalt solution, and from nine to eighteen, it's a solution mixed from. Uh, ferric chloride, cobalt chloride, and hydrochloric acid. Transmission curves of Gardner in 10 millimeter pass lengths, uh, Gardner 1 or Gardner 18, you see there's a really dark brownish color only in for Gardner 18. There are some more standards, each Industrial uh, has developed more or less an own standard based on the samples they have to evaluate. So we have the sailboard color, ASTM color for oils or petrol. We do have uh, pharmacopoeia standards for European, for the US, for Chinese. Um, and these all yeah, now based on these color measurement and on the color uh, definitions we have seen for the human eye and for the lamps. So I think we are a little bit over time. Um, I would like to end here with this slide and um, I'd like to ask, did we get any questions? Hey, Jürgen. Thank yeah. you. Uh, that was great. Uh, we do have a few questions, and so I'll, I'll just ask them and uh, leave it up to you and Ralph to answer. Thank you for all that info. So uh, first one is, my raw material supplier uses a an older model, model Leco, a, a 300 or a 400 for their color measurement. Uh, will the, the current Leco's, the 620 and the 690, give the same results? Oh yeah, great questions. Yeah, definitely that's also very important to offer the same results on the new instrument. The new instrument use more or less the same optical paths, so it's based on the same optical um, construction. So that means when it's using a tungsten lamp and a grating and um, so everything which was used also with the previous instruments and so therefore, the reading results are, are yeah, nearly identical to the previous instruments. So there's, there's no difference in the reading results. OK, great. Thank you. Um, question on what Ralph was talking about earlier. There are uh, several types of sample cuvettes that we could use, but which one is the best choice. Ah, yes, excellent. Um, I always prefer to recommend to use the 11 millimeter round wires. It's just a lot of uh, features because it's uh, just a, it's a glass vial, so you can measure everything in that glass vial. Um, you need only two milliliter sample, so it <laughs> can be used also for pharmaceutical, yeah, where you don't have so much or where, where the sample is very expensive or so, you can use these 11 millimeter round while. And only if you are going in very, very low colored regions, so in, for instance, uh, 
European pharmacopoeia, you have to distinguish between B7, B8, B9, then we recommend to use 50 millimeter sample cells, preferred the um, PMMA, so the plastic cells, the uh, designed as disposable sample cells, so you, there's no need for cleaning the sample cells because cleaning often yeah, you will have uh, scratches or it's sometimes, especially on the rectangular cells, it's difficult to clean with really down to the edge of the sample cell. So standard cell for all measurements is recommended just to use the 11 millimeter vial. And only if you need much more details or if you measure haze in color, one, two, three, yeah, there you probably have to use the 50 millimeter sample cell. Okay. All right, thanks. And uh, I know we're over time, so maybe just uh, maybe just one more question, mm -hmm. well, a couple more questions here, actually, if, if, <laughs> if you still have the time. Um, so it about the um, installation and and using these in in certain regulated industries. Is there an IQ OQ or some kind of, kind oh, of yeah. package mm -hmm. available? Sure. Mm -hmm. For the Liquid 690, there's an IQ OQ available, so we can do these installation qualification and operational qualification at the customer side. It's done by a trained Hach person, service technician or similar so and that's offered by Hach. so that means uh, the commissioning is um, there's a document available so that all steps are documented on paper and can be then um, yeah okay. recorded on a paper record and uh, that's available yes and uh, as we have seen there are some standards necessary for these IQOQ we have the test filter set, so the instrument will be tested during the qualification. And um, yeah, according to the manufacturer's specification, so we will check all important parameters on the instrument during the operation and qualification. Okay. Thank you. And then uh, we have one last question here. Um, so for for the lab system for the for the LECOs. Um, what delta between two colors could be considered equal? So Ralph was describing this earlier. Uh, yeah, what comparison. delta could be considered as equal? That depends. Depends. <laughs> <laughs> that depends. It depends a little bit on in which color, because you know, the human eye yeah, can distinguish between millions of colors, and if they are near by side, yeah. yeah, delta E. Sometimes you can see a simple delta E of, uh, we have to distinguish between surface colors and liquid colors. I think liquid color, you don't see a delta E of 0.1 or so by your eyes. That's really difficult to see that. But on uh, surface color, you can really see a delta E of 0.1. Is, your eyes. is there a is there a way to set this within the instrument with the with the color comparison on the Lico or how do how do we define what different uh, what the delta E is acceptable on with the instrumental measurement? What yeah <laughs> what is is acceptable is a definition of the user. What does the customer accept? <laughs> yeah. The instrument can measure for sure delta E 0 0.1. That's no problem for the instrument from, from the technique and so on. But the definition okay. was acceptable. This is done by the user or by the customer. Do I have okay. a high quality product? Then probably my, my delta E definition is very small or my tolerance is small. I do I have a just consumer product? Well, probably my delta E tolerance is much bigger. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> I thank you guys for your time. Um, I don't know if you have, we do have other questions that have come in right here at the end. Um, maybe we can get in touch with 
Uh, Jean, we have uh, contact information for the attendees that we could follow up yes. with questions directly. Yes. As we are already 15 minutes over time, and um, I think we, we need to close the call, but we do have some questions left. And uh, we will for sure answer them uh, by mail. Um, I hope that is okay for you guys, because otherwise I think uh, we are running out too late. Okay. Yeah. Um, if it's okay, then we do this by, we contact you, the people who have uh, put some uh, other questions in the call, we will for sure contact you within the next uh, week. Okay. Um, then I want to thank all all of you, of the speakers, but also the participants. So um, we will follow you up uh, through email or phone. And you can also ask in, in the survey uh, to request a follow up and then we will contact you too. So thank you for joining us today. And uh, yeah, of course, we hope to see you again in future webinars. Please fill in the survey and uh, let us know if you were uh, okay with it. And um, have a great afternoon, I would say. Thank you very Jan, much. I, I believe yes. I believe we will share I believe we will share this presentation to the yes everyone everyone uh, will get this presentation so the recording and also with a follow up mail with some more information about the system so with an mm -hmm. easy link going to the product pages and uh, with also contact information. But anyway, the questions that are there, because I see still coming in, um, mm -hmm. sorry for that and sorry for the for the limited time, but I'm afraid that they will shut us out automatically after some, some period. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, we will come back for to you for sure, okay? Okay. So uh, thank you very much everybody and have a very nice afternoon. Bye bye. Thank you. You too. Yeah, also from our side. Take care. Bye -bye. And you will receive a link uh, normally after the after this uh, session. You will re receive automatic a link to fill in the survey. And yeah, normally that should should be done. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>